It's a pleasure to have you join us today on the program, Healthy Living. I'm Adesu Walsawagye, and uh, I must read uh, this uh, uh, write-up for your own pleasure and education. So, this is uh, Cholera Alert. The alert provides essential information on cholera, a highly contagious and severe disease. So it's no longer news that uh, there is cholera outbreak in Nigeria and Lagos State is uh, badly hit. Now, let's look at the cause of cholera. Cholera is caused by consuming food or water contaminated with feces from an infected person, poor hygiene, poor environmental sanitation and inadequate access to clean water. The symptoms include diarrhea, vomiting, dehydration, and abdominal cramps. Now, how do you prevent diarrhea? Drink clean potable water, wash hands frequently with soap and water, keep the environment clean and hygienic, avoid close contact with cholera patients, cook food thoroughly. For those of us who say we won't have dawn, granite is in the season now, everybody is eating boiled granite. And, you know, we just buy from the vendor and straight to the mouth. You don't know the hygienic condition of that food you're buying. So it's better for you to buy, take home, wash. If possible, cook it again. Cook it again to be sure of what you are eating. So cook food thoroughly and stop properly. This is not a period where you do half done and all of that. So safe practices you should indulge in include boil water before drinking, use water filters or purifiers, wash hands with soap or ash and water before preparing food. That's one. And then what do you do again? Pre uh, keep your surroundings clean and then wash your hands with soap and ash and water before preparing food before eating and after using the toilet. And you must keep your surroundings very clean and hygienic. Dispose of waste properly. And then use toilets and latrines properly. Some persons don't know how to use all of that. So how is cholera treated? Drink oral rehydration solution, ORS. Particularly those of you who have kids at home, they go to school, you don't know what to pick up. So you need to get at least some sachets of ORS, and this is to replace fluid. Seek medical attention at the hospital for fluid and electrolyte replacement, antibiotics, rest, and hydration. You need plenty of water. So this is a take-home message. Now, cholera is preventable and treatable. Practice good hygiene and sanitation. Drink clean water. Cook food thoroughly. Seek medical attention immediately if symptoms occur. And uh, this, is where, this is where I'm going to say many thanks to Dr. O.E. Obari Siagmo. He's an associate prof and consultant, Department of Public Health and Community Medicine, Uniben UBTH. And Dr. Harrieta Ugbeni, M1 Edo PRO. And Dr. Irene Irinose Akindeno, President M1 Edo State 2023-2025. Biennium. Okay, so the three of them put this right up together for your benefit. So try and do, don't say, ah, cholera is in Lagos, it's very far. People travel, water travel. Anything can just happen. You cannot be too sure. So for those of us who just buy fruits on the street and straight to the mouth, or uh, when you buy, you just get a sachet of water, just rinse it, one can, one can, anyhow, anyhow. Like a lot of persons will say, all oh, die, now die. No to eat today, that's all oh, die, don't be die. There are some where you cause by yourself, okay? So practice um, uh, cleanliness and uh, hygienic practice will make life a lot easier for you and help you not to contract um, cholera. Be proactive at all times when it comes to your health. So today we are going to look at um, eating, eating to combat cholera, eating to combat cholera. Like uh, my guest that I have here would always say, your food can actually heal you and kill you if you're not careful. If you don't want to eat your food as drugs, 
then you have to do quite a number of things when it comes to food. So join me as I make welcome uh, Benga Oladipo, who is a dietitian nutritionist from the University of Benin Teaching Hospital. Benga Oladipo, it's been a while. You abandoned your sister. <laughs> <laughs> Very happy to be again. Okay, you. thank you. All right, looking beautiful in our scrub is Faith Eseka. I hope I got that right. Yes, Faith is also a dietitian. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. Okay, I rushed you from work. Yes, Apologies sir. for that. It's just to educate uh, the Nigerian people. Um, a fertility segment will not hold today due to some circumstances beyond our control. But hopefully, we'll bring you 15 minutes of that fertility segment next week. We couldn't get hold of our doctor. She's kind of very, very busy with procedures in her facility, so we cannot um, see her, but we will definitely bring her next week. All right, Mr. Gwenga, we're looking at eating to combat cholera. It's no news to you now that uh, cholera is life and direct in our country, Nigeria. I started from Lagos, and we understand that quite a number of persons have died already. So uh, let me ask you one question first. Do we have to always be reactive or proactive when it comes to our health, yes, you know, like well, the way the way I, I tell, I do tell people about lifestyle. You know, sometimes like your lifestyle determine how healthy you will, you will actually be. You know, people don't take lifestyle serious. Serious. In habits, in some cases, mm. you just see something and then you know take it in. They don't care what's going to happen. You know, one of the things that they ask us to you know do to prevent this cholera is cooking properly mm. and eating well. Mm. Eating well. Eating well, eating yes, well. it was mentioned. So, yes, eating well, cook properly. No, it's not only that. Do, do you know that some people cook food and then they probably they want to cook the whole food for the whole day? For the whole month, go no, Once no, there's no, light no, in your no, area, no, you, no, you no, cook no, for one month no, straight no, up. No, not even the, those people that actually store their home inside the refrigerator this time around. Mm. I'm talking of people that just cook. And after cooking, they cover it, and then they're off for work. And then when they return, no, no eating, you don't nothing, it. no warming and everything. They start like that and eat it like that. We have some microorganisms that actually grow, bacteria, so to say, in food. You know, we have food that you cooked by yourself you after cook, washing you your hands and getting everything very, ready. Very well in the morning. Mm. But you just, you actually you left it. work. And then when you return in the evening, you also just dish that food like that and started eating like that. Mm. You don't even warm and everything. Before you know, you eat that food is a protein of food. The food is covered, though. It's covered. Well covered. Yes. But you don't eat, you don't warm it. You eat it. And it's danger. Mm. You can't eat like that. You need to warm it because there's something already grow inside that food. Inside that food. The reason why we cook our food is to actually destroy the activity of microorganisms. That's what we do. But people don't do that. You can contact cholera from there too. When you eat food that's actually being contaminated, they call it food poison. Not that someone put poison in your food Indeed, now. Yeah. But that food actually generates poison and they, they eat it like that. We need to educate our people. What your people will call a for Do you understand now? We need, to call, we need to actually educate our people that after cooking, two hours, if you actually cover that food for two hours, you need to warm it before you consume it. These are the things that we need to let our people know. And these are things that can easily cause issue okay. for our people. Not only cooking properly alone, mm -hmm. not only you know, eating well alone. You have to preserve your food mm -hmm. well and make sure that anytime you are eating, you must eat warm food, not cold. Not cold food. All right, Faith, you've been nodding your head, and I know you want to say something. You want to add, please, let's feel your pulse on this issue. Okay, um, to add up to what Mr. Gwenga said, I This is my show. You yes. call him by name. I don't want to know talk. what Mr. Gwenga means. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> to add to what you said earlier mm -hmm. about... Um, to what Gwenga said. No, to what you said earlier okay. about boiling water. Okay. I think people need to be educated that boiled water can also be recontaminated. I do not... Okay, not after properly, boiling water, yes. it can be recontaminated. Yes, it can, if not properly wow. stored well. So the preservation of whatever we're taking into our body needs to be properly done the right way. So when you're preparing your food, you need to use very clean water, especially in areas that are not really clean. So a person stays in an environment that you have open gutters along the line, and then you have a general tap that the community Everybody use. Uses, so if you're not so sure of the tap water, so it's advisable that you boil every water that you use to cook, to drink, 
and sometimes to even wash clothes. Yes, mm. To wash clothes or boil water? Yes, in some environment that are not properly clean. Okay, okay, so we're learning every day. Now, Mr. Benga, this cholera thing, I know a lot of persons in this environment believe that it is in Lagos, it ends in Lagos, and nothing can happen. Forgetting the fact that food will travel, fruits yes. will travel, human beings will travel, those who have it will travel, those who are asymptomatic will have it, and all of that. So, what are the preparations we should put in place to combat cholera? Yes, you know, what the first thing we should do, like we are doing now, we educate our people. That's one of the things. And another thing, when that's naturally, you know, being happen, how to prepare their food, what to combine together to eat, not only that, what actually the, you know, the kind of premature that actually put in place mm. in cooking, even though in buying food stuffs. You know, remember that like, some people can go to, you know, open market and then trying to buy their food stuff there. There's some food that are actually rotting there and they are still buying it and then, you know, prepare it because of the economic and everything. People think, you know, to buy, a, you know, a rubber of tomato now is something. Then they go for rotting one. And then before you know it, they, they actually, you know, the, prepare a, a rubber of tomato is 15,000, 16,000, even you know, we, 18 in some areas. You no, know, we have this issue. Then if we cannot, you know, talk to our market men and women, then we need to let the consumer know about this. If you go to market, you want to buy, you know, food stuff, you want to buy fresh one, mm -hmm. you have to go to a place whereby you get really fresh, you know, food stuff buying there. Not just buying things because you don't have money. And at the end of the day, you cause problems, you know, to yourself. So these are the things we need to let people know that you must go a place whereby you buy really fresh fruits or vegetable, or tomatoes, or whatever food stuff you are buying. Not only that, we should let our people know that the environment where they cook their food, they must set it in such a way that it's free movement is there. So when you are cooking, you don't, you know, add what is naturally okay <laughs> together. So okay. let me just cook. Do you understand? Now? Another thing is, you know, how much do they buy pure water now? Pure water is 15 naira per sachet. Pure water is 15 naira. Do you understand? Now. Some people cannot do that. They, they prefer taking any water they want to take anyhow and then just drink anyhow. So people will take bottled water that's not treated. And then before you know it, no chlorine yeah, yeah. there. And mm -hmm. they are taking it. These are the things that can cause a lot of problems to people. And people don't really understand. Mm -hmm. Then we need to go out there and let those you know, economy deprived people know about this thing. It's not about you and I. You know, like, you know, you are involved. You can just say, okay, this is the step to follow. Mm -hmm. But what about the common people out there? Who's telling them what to do? Nobody. And they are the victim of all these things. And then they even go to the hospital, no money to take care of them. And before you know, it's just ordinary cholera now because no actually proper. You, you call know. cholera ordinary. I'm it just saying that like, so if you actually detected early, yeah. and yes. you can, it's something that you can actually, you know, have prevented. And then before you know, you can actually, if you actually were involved, you can take care of this yourself. Mm. Now, for example, now somebody is stooling, and the person doesn't know what to do. It's not, it's permitting, it's, you know, watering, you know, stooling and everything. Before, you know, in the next just few minutes, the person actually emaciating and, you know, you know, they kind of depreciate it. And they, because he doesn't know what to do. That person is losing electrolyte. Instead of to replace it like, you know, you know, take some, you know, electrolyte and then be fine, just need something to do. But he also was not very involved. What he wants us to do. So we need to go out there and educate people. And not only that, if you want to eat and then you are not, in, in, in a very, in, you are not incapacitated to get things that you want to yeah, eat. You want to eat. Just now, we have we. I want to eat meat. I don't have money to buy meat. Okay. You can go for egg. Just okay. Now. Oh, no, no, I'm that. just trying to imagine. No way. No, 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 I'm yes. trying to imagine egg in Ogbolo soup or egg in Negusi soup, egg in vegetable soup. Where is it? Kind of buy now, meat. Now, now, if, if I when I mean egg, some people that eat rice that they must get chicken. You can take egg with rice, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, if you want to eat swallow and then you are looking for what to eat, we have, you know, dry fish over there that you can buy those small, small dry fish and then just spread everything there. You can still get those one like 500 naira and then make for the whole family. You already have protein sauce. So okay. you, to eat balance is not something that you must get 1,000 naira meat. You get, you know, you have to, you know, eat try to combat things the together. Food. What I'm saying here is knowledge. Knowledge. We're involved. 
because all the grammar we are speaking now, how many people will understand it? But we need to go to where these people are really are and really talk to them. Market, look at the marketplaces, they're everywhere is dirty. Then if you buy anything from market, when you get home, make sure that you clean it very well. You wash it properly before you cook it. Because there's some microorganisms that are heat resistant. If you actually, no matter how you cook them, they are still there. They are still so there. So what do we do about salt micro? Yes, what micro we, that's what we, we can, that's why, that's why our immune system must always ready to fight those things. When you take them in, if your immune system is well strong enough to fight those things, that's what we must take care of ourselves. Mm. And then take care of ourselves, we need fruit and vegetables to do that. Because that's where we get phytonutrient and fat, I mean, phytonutrient and antioxidant. Mm. So when we have, we call them phyto, when you have all of them together, you are taking them open. Then you are building your immune system. And then if those things happen, you have the soldier inside you. You have all the army inside you that can really fight those things when they come. But if someone is dying, he has not eaten for two, three, four days, and then that person just take ordinary a little contaminated water, he reacted to it. That person actually just come up with some lot of complications. And before you know that, this person is going, this person is dying. Because immune system is already, you know, it was not actually, you know, in the best way. Okay, to let, let, let me come to you now, Faith. When somebody's immune system is gone, I'm, I'm going to take you up on that hot water issue. Right. After boiling water, the water can be contaminated. contaminated. Yes, ma'am. It's, uh, it, it's, it's huge. Okay, now, somebody whose immune system is already compromised, putting into consideration what is happening now by way of the cholera outbreak, what is that person expected to do when the immune system is compromised either by ailments or pregnancy? You know, when a woman is pregnant, her immune system is uh, not as strong as it used to be. And when somebody is down with um, some underlying ailment, the person could be diabetic, the person could be hypertensive, the person could be a cancer, a cancer patient, you know, stuff like that. So when somebody is, um, somebody's immune system is down, what is that person expected to do in this present dispensation of cholera? Okay, so the first thing I would advise for that person to do is to avoid eating out. That's the first thing. Okay. Yes, avoid eating out in any form. At all costs? Yes, at all costs, because the immune system is already compromised. Mm. And the person needs to take into consideration about everything that he or she is going to put into his or her mouth, starting from water. Because you use water to cook, like I said, and if you boil water and if it's not well properly um, preserved, it can also be recontaminated, especially when the environment or where the person lives is not properly kept. Then another thing, again, I would like to add is to this is that I see a lot of persons use rags in their homes. Okay, yes. And when you, when you use rags to clean a particular place in the house and you don't properly dry it, you don't disinfect it with hot water, and then you just dump it some, just dump it somewhere, and then you are still cooking in that That's environment. That's you're talking about those kitchen napkins. Yes, or yes. Kitchen napkins, rag. After you use it to, dis to, to disinfect areas around the house, you need to properly dry them and also disinfect them with hot water. Okay. So that you don't bring back what you are trying to take out. Okay. So someone who has a compromised immune system needs to take into consideration about everything that goes on around that person. Even when you're consuming your fruits and your vegetables, you have to make sure that you are the one getting your fruits yourself, washing it yourself, even slicing your vegetables yourself. I see a lot of persons do this in markets where they get fresh vegetables and then they just say, please help me cut this vegetable. And then they go home, they don't properly rinse these things well. Some persons even forget and they just put it directly into, into the, the food. food. So all those things need to be um, taken into consideration Okay. Well. Yes, um, now, uh, sorry, uh, in, uh, in addition, sorry, yes. like, you know, you just mentioned like, you know, the hygiene aspect of it and then and he, briefly, she mentioned about the fruit and vegetable that they need to do. The person, the person needs to eat balanced diet. So you should not forget that the immune system is compromised. The person needs to eat well. The balanced diet just to bring up to, you know, you know to restate that. We you know. keep hearing balanced diet, balanced yeah. diet no. all the time. Mm -hmm. For me, what is balanced may not be balanced for faith. Well, yes. well. What is balanced for faith may not be balanced for Kunle or balanced for Peter. Yes, well. uh, do, do, do you understand? Yeah, no, so no, no. is there... Is there is there some kind of balance there that fits all? Yes. You know, the, 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 what, what you are going to now, you are, you are talking about the proportion. Mm. You are talking about the quantification. Mm -hmm. Do you understand now? Okay. So what I mean about 
balanced diet. Balanced diet is balanced diet. What makes it balanced is when you eat all the nutrients in right proportion. Right proportion, I mean right proportion. We have calorie distribution. If someone is taking 50% of carbohydrate, someone is taking 25% of, of protein, another person is taking 50% of lipid as fat, you know, mm. it could be, if you are taking 60, if I'm taking 55%, you are taking 60%. That 60% is your home diet. My own balance diet. So balanced diet is balanced diet. But based on the work you do, based on estate, based on, you know, your gender, can make the diet different. But balanced diet, balanced diet is still balanced diet. Just to have all those nutrients in the right proportion in your diet. That's what balanced diet is all about. And everybody can do it. It's not about, it's not about oh, uh, balanced diet is difficult to do. It's not difficult to do. Mm -hmm. What we are saying is, what's the proportion of protein you are taking? You mm -hmm. take it well. So it does not mean the source you get that protein from. Okay. It could be animal source. It could be plant okay. source. Okay. So just for you to get the right, get the right protein, protein you need to eat. So balanced diet is not what people think. It's not, you know, I, 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 when I go to canteen or restaurant, I buy 50,000 Nera meat and then 1,000 Nera Amala. And then you say you are eating balanced diet. Of course, <laughs> no. you, are, of no. course you are not eating balanced diet. Okay. You are just eating to take you to UBTH. That's mm -hmm. what you are doing. Mm -hmm. So if you want to take balanced diet, you take it in the right proportion. And then let someone that know about diet yes. interpret yes, that your calorie for you. Okay, Faith. Now, kids are in school. Some of them are writing exams already. A lot of them will pick one or two. They will buy food from vendors. Some who took food to school, the food may get contaminated somehow, somehow. Because by the time they get to school and it's break time, the food is already cold. The food is already cold. You know, from what you said, I'm feeling very uneasy right now. So what do we do about our kids who are in school, our kids who go to school, the ones who are boarders, you know, school children generally, what are parents or what should parents do to keep them safe this cholera period? We're hoping and praying that uh, this problem is surmounted. Like we usually do in Nigeria, we have a way of surmounting it. There's always divine intervention somehow from God with everything that uh, all medical practitioners are doing. Okay, so the first thing I would advise parents to do is to first of all educate their children about it. Let them know how terrible it is for them. And also, another preventive measure parents can try out is to get a proper vacuum flask. Okay. Now, the vacuum flask has a way of retaining heat for a longer time. So, rather than just buying the regular food warmers that we use, mm -hmm. our advice parents should get um, a vacuum flask. And also, for their water, you have to make sure you, you know, advise your children to go home and to go with water from the house. And if they are not sure of the source of water, they shouldn't collect from anybody. And also, I, I, I believe schools right now should take the measures of trying to screen through the vendors they have, the things they sell, to make sure that they are safe and okay for children to consume. Because it's going to be very bad if anybody can just come into any school and then sell anything to any child. So I think schools right now should try and, you know, go through the, um, the vendors that they have to make sure they are registered with the school, to make sure that the, their method of preparing things, especially food, is properly done and has no way of putting those children, putting our children at risk. Okay, because uh, from what uh, the research has said, Cholera, you can only contract cholera through what you take in. It's oral fica. So you have to like consume contaminated food, okay? And then you also have to give space to any sufferer around you and then report immediately to the hospital. All right, Mr. Benga, before we wrap up now, you've always said that food can be poison and food can be medicine and food can be nourishing. Please explain all of this for us in a minute, if you can. Yes, you know, if we don't eat the right food, we ought to eat. It will be poisoning when, you, like, for example, someone that needs to take, you know, a, a proportion of carbohydrate, and they, instead of taking carbohydrate, it's the, because I don't want to add weight, and it's taking, you know, food that contains fat. So that person can be in danger of, you know, 
hyperlipidemia, having high cholesterol, that's what I mean. Mm -hmm. Diabetes can actually be in danger of, you know, ketone diabetes. That's what I mean. So these are the things that you know, happen to people when they don't eat what they mm -hmm. ought to eat. Mm -hmm. So we need to really let our people know that if you eat well, you might not visit the hospital. You know that if you eat well is usually very vague. It's a very vague statement if you eat well. Yeah, what what I'm eating uh, well means uh, to me, Mr. Yeah. Ben, that yeah. does not mean <laughs> no, eating no, well for no, you. No, 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 that's, you always say that thing. But I want to tell you now, I want to tell you now, that eat, me. what I mean by eating well, what I mean by eating well, for example, you eat in the morning, you must have the source of carbohydrates in your food. That's okay. the energy. Don't say, don't say because you're dieting, you will not eat no, carbs. No, no, no. That, that's wrong. That's, a, that's, the, that's the source of your energy for that day. You mm -hmm. must have the, um, I mean, the level of protein in your food for your cells replication and proliferation. You must have protein there. Then you have your fat there. That fat there, the lipid you have in your diet, have the way of actually it's the metabolic process. Okay. So if you don't have all these things in your food, you are not eating well. And for example, you should know that all the micronutrients, electrolytes, yes. all of them, they actually in very small you know, okay. proportion that we need them. Okay. If we don't have them in our diet, we might actually develop what we call eating hunger. Okay. That eating hunger, nobody can see it like you are walking on the way they are. This person, I know, you can't you you can, you can, you can, you can see it. Until you go to the hospital and then they take your blood sample Before and they say, okay, they this person eating. has it. And it's more than dangerous that you know, protein, energy, malnutrition. Okay, Mr. Mr. Benga, this is where I'm going to <laughs> cut you short. Thank you for finding time to be with us You're on welcome, the program. Faith, thank you the pleasure. Well. Thank you for being with me on the program. All right, people, that's eating right for you during this period of cholera. Don't just eat, 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 eat. Be very cautious of what you eat. We'll see you again next week. Bye-bye.